Hey there, thanks for tuning in this Tuesday. I'm gonna push pause on what I've been talking about the last three weeks, and I'm doing that in light of what happened last week um, in our nation around racial issues playing themselves out and the violence um, in various states uh, across America. And so I wanna talk about uh, racial reconciliation today. And um, I want you also, if you can, check out Nancy Hicks Live, my Facebook. I'd love for you to engage there. On Sunday morning, I posted an apology around this very issue, so check that out as well. Um, you know, John Perkins tell, uses an analogy, and John Perkins is an a, a activist and a speaker teacher and an author, phenomenal man, and racial reconciliation is his thing. Um, he tells an analogy, uses an analogy that has been so helpful for me in just understanding why there's such tension in races in America. And so um, he uses this analogy, and this is it. Um, imagine two baseball teams, and I'm going to use the Philadelphia Phillies since I live in the Philly area, and the Toronto Blue Jays since I am originally from Toronto. Imagine the Phillies and the Blue Jays um, playing each other, and the, um, the Blue Jays are cheating. The whole time they're cheating. They're using pine tar, they're using modified equipment, they're using performance drugs, and they, and you know what, the Phillies know it. And there's this cheating that's happen, habit, happening habitually throughout the course of the innings. And so by around seventh inning, the score's ridiculously high for the Toronto Blue Jays, like 27 to maybe two for the Phillies. And, and the Phillies have been frustrated the whole time. And finally, by seventh inning, they say, enough, we're done, we're done, this is not fair. And so finally, the Blue Jays say, you know what, you're right, you're right, you guys caught us, you're right, we're sorry, okay, we haven't been playing nice, but let's continue playing, except that they've had such an advantage and they're gonna continue playing with the score still being 27 to two. They've had this advantage all along. And they want to continue to play the game, but there's a problem. And that, I think, really sums up for me. And John Perkins said, I used that analogy, um, sums up for me why there's such tension around uh, race, uh, racism and racism in America. And so I wanted to just say to you that 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, the Apostle Paul says, you know, if you are reconciled, to God through Christ, you then, if you call yourself a Christian, self-identify as a Christian, you then have been given the ministry of reconciliation. That is to, to reconcile people, to love people to Christ, to be reconciled to God through Christ, and then to minister to all humanity to be reconciled to one another. And so I want to suggest three things. Falling woefully short of what needs to be done, I absolutely know that. But three things we can at least begin to do today to bring about racial um, reconciliation here in America or in Canada or wherever you are as you're listening to this vlog. Number one, you can pray. You can pray for reconciliation. Pray that people would be reconciled to God and would be reconciled to one another, especially around these, te around these uh, racial tensions. Number two, you can acknowledge. We can acknowledge we've had an advantage. White people have had an advantage, and we can acknowledge that, so that social injustices have been done. We don't have to defend ourselves. We don't have to say, yeah, but no. We have absolutely been playing unfair for years. And number three, we can listen. We can do a better job listening to the woes, listening to the cries, listening to the stories, and not defending ourselves and not reacting, but listening. So we can pray, we can acknowledge, and we can listen. And again, that doesn't come anywhere close to all that needs to be done, but it's a starting point. God bless you as you really engage because of who God is in reconciliation. God bless you. Thank you.